Hello. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion about vectors. And as you would imagine, you would have to work with more than just one vector at a time. For that reason, you're going to have to be able to add and subtract vectors. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss about in this lesson. One thing before we talk about addition methods is that vectors, as I said, these geometric vectors, we can place them anywhere, but we can uh, create equivalent vectors and place them in any particular relation to one another so it makes the task of adding vectors or subtracting vectors or working anything with these vectors a lot easier. Therefore, don't be surprised to see vectors completely independent of each other placed on a piece of paper. You can translate those vectors in any configuration that you want given that you keep their magnitude and their direction exactly as they were. Let's start by looking at the two methods that we have to uh, add vectors. So basically we have the triangle method or as it's also known as head to tail. In this method if we have these two vectors u and v as I sketch in this uh, diagram you can see that the vector v starts at the end of vector u. Basically you place the vectors in this configuration head to tail right? The head of one vector is at the tail of the other. This triangle method it's a very easy way to see that the resultant of these two vectors, so if I want to find the vector that represents u plus v, is going to be the vector that goes from the start point of u to the end point of v. And that's our resultant. That's how we call this vector, a resultant. The other method that we can uh, use is the parallelogram method, also known as tail to tail. If we have these two vectors u and v, in the configuration where both vectors start from the same point, then we can construct a parallelogram by sketching the parallel vectors with both u and v. For this v vector, I can find an equivalent vector I'm going to call a. As you can see, we constructed this to be parallel and in the same direction, so it's an equivalent vector. In other words, applying the triangular method that I just told you about, the resultant is going to be this diagonal u plus a, a being the same as v. So u plus v, using the parallelogram method when the vectors are tail to tail, is going to be this uh, diagonal. There are two particular situations that I would like to mention. If you have two vectors u and v that are parallel and have the same direction, then the magnitude of u plus v is going to be the magnitude of u plus the magnitude of v. The direction of the resultant vector u plus v is going to be the same direction as u or v because they are both in the same direction so you're going to continue in the same direction. So as you can imagine it's going to be a vector along these vectors but as long as u plus v. It all makes sense. However, if you have the two vectors u and v that have opposite directions, and the magnitude of u is greater than magnitude of v, like in this diagram, they are parallel, but they are pointing in opposite directions, and u is greater than v, then the magnitude of this resultant vector u plus v is going to be the magnitude of u the bigger vector minus the magnitude of v and the direction of this resultant vector u plus v is going to be having the same direction as u the longer the bigger vector that's uh, the two particular situations that you may encounter when trying to add vectors and keep in mind that when uh, trying to add multiple vectors not just two it's a good idea to use triangle method because the resultant for multiple vectors that you can uh, arrange in this configuration head to tail is going to be the vector that starts at the beginning of the first vector and ends at the end of the last vector. You just go from the beginning to the end. Now let's look at how we subtract vectors. 
when subtracting vectors we're gonna use basically the same methods like we did for addition but for the vector that we want to subtract we're gonna consider the equivalent vector to the opposite of that one instead of the vector itself so in this case if we have a vector u and we have to subtract vector v which is this one here I'm going to consider the opposite of vector v which is the same magnitude but the opposite direction and I'm going to place it exactly in the head-to-tail configuration like we had for the triangle method for addition so this resultant vector is nothing else than u minus v or we can even say u plus negative v and that's the best way to subtract vectors now for the parallelogram method uh, the tail-to-tail -tail method so the same vectors uh, that we had before u and v translated so that they are in the configuration tail to tail the resultant vector w is u minus v pointing towards u so basically subtraction can be uh, reduced to a problem of addition of uh, vectors I hope it's a lot easier to grasp than this you should be aware that there is such thing as a zero vector denoted with this symbol just like any other uh, vector which has a magnitude of zero and no particular direction you will encounter this zero vector when adding opposite vectors so when adding two vectors of opposite direction and same magnitude is going to result in a zero vector before we conclude this lesson let's actually uh, have a look at some vector properties as well so for any vectors u, v and w we know that u plus v equals to v plus u this is the commutative property we also know that if you have u plus v an addition of two vectors that we perform first plus another vector w it's equivalent to u plus the resultant of v plus w and this is the associative property and then if you have a vector v plus the zero vector it's equal to vector v because that zero doesn't add anything or we can say even that equals to zero vector plus the vector v and this is the identity property you have pretty much the same properties that you have for addition and subtraction with uh, numbers. Let's conclude the lesson here and we'll continue in the next one. Thanks for watching.